have a blog application here which has many article records. Now this site also supports internationalization which allows the user to change the language that's displayed on the site. So here you can see there's an option to translate it into a Wookiee speak. So clicking that changes the title articles here to native Wookiee speak. You can see English says articles and Wookiee speak says that. However, you can see the article content itself did not change. That is still displayed in English. So how do we change the database content depending on the user's selected language? Well, the way internationalization is normally done is through YAML files. You can see under the config locales directory I have here, there's an English YAML file and a Wookiespeak YAML file, which contains the translated text. For more information on this approach, watch episode 138. While this technique does work well for static text that would normally be in the view template, it won't help us with dynamic text generated from the database. For that, we'll need to store the translations in the database instead. And we can use the Globalize 3 gem to help us do this. It makes it easy to create a separate table to store the translations, and then it will automatically switch to the proper translation depending on the user's currently selected locale. So to use this in our application, just go to the bottom of the gem file and then add the Globalize 3 gem into there, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. And then next, go into the model you want to translate, in this case the article model, and call translates and pass it the names of the columns you want to translate, such as the name and content column in this case. Now we still need to create the database table to store these translations. And you can see in the readme here, you could just call create translation table inside of the same migration where you create the table for the model. However, if you already have a model set up with data inside of it like I do here, you may choose this alternative approach where you can create a separate migration and call create translation table there and specify to migrate the data. That's what I'll do here. So I'm going to run this command to generate a new migration and call it create article translations. There we go. And then I just need to edit this migration to match what is shown in the readme. I'm just going to paste in some content into here where I call create translation table on the article model and then pass in the columns that I want to be able to translate. In this case, a name column, which is a string type and the content column, which is a text type. So this data will be stored inside of this translation table instead of the original articles table. And then I just tell it to migrate the data. So I'll just run rake db migrate to create that translation table. And now let me show you how this works inside the console. Now, if you take a look at the current i18n locale, you can see it's at its default, which is English. And if we fetch the first article and get its name, you can see that works and we get Superman. Now, what if we change the locale to a Wookiee speak instead, and then try to fetch the first article's name, and we get nil as the response instead, because there's no translation for Wookiee speak. Now, Globalize 3 overrides both the getter and setter behavior for the columns and scopes it to the current translation. So that means if I update the attribute for the name and set it to something like that, then it will insert a record into the article translations for that Wookiee speak value. So if I try fetching the first article name again, I get this in response. But then changing the i18n locale to English again will now display the English name. Now let's see this in action on the site. You may need to restart your Rails application, but once you do and hit reload, the English version should look the same because that data was migrated over. But if we go to Wookiespeak here, you can see it's pretty much blank. We do have our name that we set in the console, but all of the other attributes we set up for the translation will be nil. However, we can go in and edit one of these articles now and then fill it in with the proper translated text. There we go, that content looks good. And now if I update this article here, you can see it has that content or if I go to the English version, it has the English version still. So we have multiple languages here being properly translated. And what's kind of neat, if we go to the edit form again, we can easily update whichever translation we want by changing the language here. Now keep in mind, if you change an attribute which you did not set up for translation, like this author attribute here, I'll change this, and then when we update it, it will update all the translation uh, languages because it's in the actual articles table and not the article translations table. Now translating all the database records into each language can be quite a task. And right now it's going to just return nil values for those attributes, so you may want to provide some kind of fallback instead. To do this, just go to the application config file and add an option here called i18n.fallbacks. 
and then set that to true. So this way, any translations which are not specified in that language will fall back to the default locale, in this case, as English. Now you'll need to restart the application after making that change, but once you do and hit reload, you can see any content that we did not translate has fallen back to English. Well, that's it for this episode on using Globalize 3 to translate database records. Thanks for watching. In this week's pro episode, I continue our look into deployment and show you the basics of Chef Solo. Now I'm still working on finishing up this episode, so it's not yet available, but expect it sometime later on this week. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.